Hello! Welcome back to Teleclass English lesson number three. Aisha DJ is back again to see you all. Hope you all are in good health and ready to learn something new. Before we move on, let me ask about the bookmarks. Did you send the pictures to your teacher? Were the bookmarks useful? I'm sure they were. Now, have you got your textbooks with you? And do you have your stationaries? Well done! Now shall we begin? Let's look into our learning intention and success criteria now, shall we? We are going to learn about text features and we'll be successful if we can read and identify at least four text features. Now you'll be wondering what a text feature is, right? Do you have any idea what it is? No? Let me tell you. A text feature is all the components of a story or an article apart from the main body of the text. Okay? Now let me give you some examples of text features. The headings, illustrations, bold words, captions, pictures. All these are examples of text features. Okay? So children, now we are going to learn more about these text features. Do you see all these books that are on the table? Now we are going to go through some of these books and we are going to identify some of the text features that are in there, okay? By now we all know how a text feature helps us, right? Text features help readers to determine what is important to the reader. Without these text features, readers might spend wasted time flipping through the books and to find information they need. If we have these text features with us, then we will be able to go to the exact point that we need. And some of the examples of some of the text features we can see from a story are uh, headings or titles, bold words, sidebars, captions, pictures, and also labeled diagrams. So now we are going to go through some of these books and we are going to find some of these examples. First, let's go through bold words. Let's go through this book. Okay, now look, children, bold words helps us to grab a viewer's attention in a sea of words which is darker than the regular type and it is used to make certain words stand out from the surrounding text. Now, do you see from this book, there are a lot of words and phrases written, right? But there are some words in red color highlighted. I saw mice of all shapes and sizes. So these words are the words that we'll be focusing while reading the book. And there are so many words in bold, isn't it? Now, shall we go through the subtitles? Now the heading of this book is A Take of the Bandit Cats. But as we go on with the book, there are some subtitles. We want Stilton. And also, there are more subtitles written. For example, what a fur brain. Now, when we go through this book, when we see this subtitle, we want Stilton, we'll understand that this part of the story will be focused on this subtitle or this area, right? This heading. And now, if we go through this subheading, what a fur brain, then we know it is going to change. The story It's going to change to another part, right? And then, let's find another subtitle the most wanted mouse now now again it has taken a turn and now we are going to from that part we are going to read up to here and then the subtitle is we leave at dawn so like this there are so many subtitles in the book so we know that we are reading different parts of the story now subtitles are used to make content easier to understand also it stands out because of their size and attracts attention Okay, now let's go through some of the illustrations. Illustrations are decorations or interpretation or visual explanation of a text. The purpose of an illustration is to illustrate or to demonstrate something clearly. Now when we read this book, look, the pictures or the visual images. As we go on with this book, we see colorful pictures on it, right? So these are called as illustrations, all right? Now let's look at this book. As we go on again, we can see colorful pictures. For example, look at this word, kite. And now near kite, that word, there is kite shown. So this word is related to the picture that is shown. So those are illustrations. Now let me give you another example. For example, this book. Look at this picture. 
me about to be made over by the fa famous Blaine Blackwell. So in the picture, the caption in here is describing the picture that is shown. So this is what illustration is. Well, now I hope you all will have an idea of what text features are, right? Now we are going to move on with our task for the day. Today we are going to do page number 60. Now shall we all take our books and turn to page number 60? Are you all ready? Good. As you all can see on page 60, we have got a text written, right? Now, the main heading of the text is the holy month of Ramazan. It's written in pink color. As you all can see, the whole text is divided into three sections. What are those? The headings that are written in blue color, what are those? That's right. They are subheadings, right? Subheadings are made, written to make it easier for us to understand the whole text, focusing on different sections. So the main heading, as you can see, is the Holy Month of Ramadan. And then there are three subheadings. What is Ramadan? What happens during Ramadan? And why do Muslims fast and pray? So those three parts are the three different sections of this whole text. Okay? Now we have gone through two text features, right? One was the heading, the heading, the Holy Month of Ramadan. And then... The second text feature was about subheadings, the three subheadings that were written. What is Ramazan? What happens during Ramazan? And why do Muslims fast and pray? Right? Now, do you see any bold words in this text? Any highlighted words? Look at the word fasting. Do you see? The word which is in green color. The word fasting is written in green and in bold so that it will be easy for us to notice that word, right? While we are looking at the text and while we are reading to the text, it will be easy for us to notice that word. And also it will be, help us to learn the meaning of the word, right? Now we are going to read this whole text. While I'm reading, I would like you all to read it along with me. So are you ready? Good. What is Ramazan? Ramazan is a time of fasting and prayer. All good Muslims should observe Ramazan because fasting teaches them to be firm and strong. The usual time of prayers are around 5 a.m. Fajr, 12 noon Luhur, 3.30 p.m. Asr, 6 p.m. Maghrib, and 7 p.m. Isha. During Ramazan, people also pray late at night and after midnight. So that sub, under that sub, subtitle, what is Ramazan, we have gone through some of the definitions of introducing the holy month of Ramazan, right? Now the next subheading is what happens during Ramazan. When Ramazan begins, schools and offices have shorter working hours. Restaurants open after sunset. Once a day's fast is broken, people spend time with their family Go to the mosque, recite Quran, meet friends, and eat together. One of the important days of Ramazan is the anniversary of the night the Quran was first revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu So this, so under this subtitle, it has it mentioned every single thing that happens throughout the Ramazan, right? And now the third subheading: Why do Muslims fast and pray? In the month of Ramazan, people pray for forgiveness of sins. They pray to get help to live a pure life. They try to do good deeds by helping others. They give money to those who don't have much money. So that has explained us why Muslims fast and pray, right? Now that has brought us to the end of the class. Before we wind up, shall we go through some of the important things we learned today? Today, the main thing we focused was on text features. By now, I hope that you have learned what text features are and also some of the examples. We went through some storybooks as well to identify text features, right? So can we, tell, can we say out loud some of the text features? Some of them are headings, subheadings, illustrations, captions, all these things, right? Now, I hope that whenever you're reading stories, you'll be able to identify these hereafter. 
okay now it is time for you to take out that notebook the notebook that we use to note down things for the next class we'll be needing some of the materials so are you ready to write good Okay, children, let's read a story before we end the class for the day. We are going to read Geronimo Stilton's Attic of the Bandit Cats. I'm sure you all will love these Geronimo stories because I always hear all my students as well as other children always talking about Geronimo. So let's begin. Okay. We have got a subheading. We want still time. What a rat's nest this morning in front of my office when I came up from the subway. I saw mice of all shapes and sizes back in the street. Do you see mice and shapes and sizes in bold? They are the words that we are focusing on. All oh, their snouts were in the air. They were staring at the windows of my office. The crowd began to chant, Stilton, Stilton, we want Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. Uh-oh, I had a feeling these mice weren't looking for my autograph. Luckily, no one recognized me. Do you see this picture over here? This is an illustration, okay? Because of you, I am Geronimo Stilton. Quiet as a mouse, I wriggled through the crowd and sneaked up the back stairs. I dashed into my office, huffing and puffing for air. I really needed to get back to my gym, Rats Lane. My secretary, Musala, ran to meet me. Mr. Stilton, horrible news. She squeaked waving the phone book we had just printed. New Mouse City's yellow pages are a disaster. There isn't one correct phone number, not one. Pale as a slice of mozzarella cheese, I leafed through the book. Addresses, telephone numbers, they're all wrong. I am ruined. I shrieked, pulling at my whiskers. I heard the crowd yelling and leaned out my window. They had it, they had licked a huge bonfire right in the middle of the street. They were burning my directories. A fierce looking mouse pointed at me with his paw. That's him, that's Geronimo Stilton, the one who published the yellow pages. He's the one who's turned New Mouse City on its tail. The crowd began chanting again, Stilton, Stilton, we want Stilton. Suddenly, all the telephones in my office started ringing. I answered the phone on my desk. I need to speak with that chatter face, Mr. Stilton. An angry voice snarled at on the other end. Um, Mr. Stilton isn't here, I squeaked in a high-pitched voice. Hopefully, the caller wouldn't know it was me. I don't know where he is, I continued. He might be in the hospital with an ingrown toenail. Oh, maybe he's helping out down at the creaky mouse nursing home. He does a lot of charity work, you know. I decided to unplug the telephones, but the fax machines were all spitting out nasty letters. Threatening email popped up on my computer screen. We know where you live. You can't, you can't hide. No hole is safe. Musella wrung her pose. 
tears rolled down her snout. Mr. Stilton, this is a total disaster. Even our own telephone number is wrong. She squeaked. We are now the Furry Tales Toilet Paper Company. Don't worry, Musella. I have everything under control. I cried, closing my eyes. Maybe I was just having a bad dream. I waited a few seconds, then opened my eyes. The rodents outside were throwing moldy cheese bowls at my window. No, this wasn't a bad dream. It was a living nightmare. So that was the end of the first subheading, that part. We want Stilton. Now we have got another subheading. Which is what a fur brain. Just then, blunders my editor in chief knocked on the door at the door. Mr. Stilton, your cousin Trap is here, he announced, tripping over his tail. I'm not in for anyone, I shouted. Blunders jumped, spilling his mug of charity. Um, well, he says it's urgent. I am not in, I repeated. Next thing I knew, my cousin, a plumpish mouse with beady eyes, was standing before me. He put both paws on my desk and smiled. Have you ever met my cousin? He owns the shop in downtown New Mouse City. Cheap junk for less. He's a true terrible prankster, and his favorite hobby is teasing me. Another thing you should know about Trap, he's like a refrigerator magnet for trouble. Sometimes you can't tear those two apart. What do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? I yelled. And please take your paws off my desk. Hello there, Cousin Kings. What's up? He squeaked picking his teeth with my letter opener. Now from this page as well, we can see so many words in bold, which are highlighted, right? Okay. I took off my glasses so that I could cry freely. Can't you see I'm in big trouble here? I choked. Oh, why did I choose this job? I could have been a lifeguard down traps smirked. Are you kidding? A fur brain like you couldn't do these jobs. I'm not a fur brain. I squeaked, filming. Just then, the phone rang. In a flash, Trap had his paw on the receiver. If it is for me, please tell them I'm not in. I backed. He picked up the phone and straightened his tie. Hello, this is the Stilton Publishing Company. No, Mr. Stilton is not in. Yes, yes, I agree that he is a hopeless chatterfish. Total nine coop. My cousin nodded. Well, of course, I'll tell him. He's a complete fur brain. Thank you for calling. He added before hanging up. I twisted my whiskers in rage. Steam poured out from my ears. I felt like the cheddar cheese marshmallow left in a microwave too long. I asked you to stay, say I was not in. I shrieked. I didn't say make friends with any wacky mouse who calls. That wasn't any wacky mouse. My cousin insisted. I was talking to Saucy Lapos, the famous chef. He says you switched the number of his restaurant with the one for the city dump. I'd better not tell you where he said he wanted to send you. All of a sudden, my cousin's eyes lit up. Hey, that reminds me, do you know why I'm here? I put my head in my pose. Yes, I do. I mumbled. You are here to drive me nuts. And it's working. I'm packing my bags for the Mad Mouse Center. I'll leave tonight. Not so fast, Trek said, giggling. I'm here to get you out of this mess. Just listen to my brilliant idea. I groaned. Not another one of my cousin's brilliant ideas. The last time I'd gotten involved in one of his crazy schemes, I had ended up stuck in a spooky castle in Transrutania. 
right, so here we can see that so Sailor Pose, the chef, as that's written on the book. Now we have got another subheading, but I think we are going to end up to here. We shall continue this story some other day, okay? So for our next class, we'll be needing two chart papers, one white glaze paper, glue bottle, scissor, and your color pencils. So I hope you all will keep all these things ready for the next class because we're going to do something interesting again. So till then, stay safe, stay at home, take care, goodbye.